I do not want to infringe or otherwise come into copyright conflicts with the owners of the images used in this presentation, and I've taken the following actions to be clear of this. The use of images of book covers here are to highlight points in an essay, which is really for entertainment purposes. I've used thumbnail and low resolution images, or I have partially obscured the covers under obvious filters and set them beside other covers so that the filter cannot be mistaken for any amendment or any adjustment to the artwork. But if you are the owner of an image and you do object to how your cover has been used here, do reach out to me at the email set out and I will indeed remove. Good day, fellow readers, and also readers of books by Jamaican authors to this, my reading of this essay. I have been thrilled by books I have read over time, and I've reached out as best as I could and invited the authors of the books that I will be mentioning. It will be my privilege if they drop in, as their work has given me enjoyment and has inspired reflection. Set out here are Jamaican and also some West Indian literary and reading platforms whose offerings have inspired and sustained my interest over the past two decades. To read books by Jamaican authors, they are a mix of writing groups, book clubs, literary publications, festivals and other events, libraries and bookstores, and author services. I am indeed indebted to them. So welcome to a portion of my essay, Mothering in 41 Jamaican Novels, Short Storybooks and Memoirs, published between 1990 and 2020. A link to the full essay and other resources is on my channel, GwynethHarold.com. So how did this start? Well, in 2016, I drafted an article on the theme of mothering that I had read in after reading non-academic books and that books that were published after 2000, because I had a sense that the writers were predominantly weaving tales and recalling memories around the major theme of mothering. Well, as it turns out, later that year was my first tour of duty as an official in the Jamaica Library Service National Book Reading Competition. And being a part of that caused me now to read even more books by Jamaicans. Well, 2020 was my fifth year of intensely reading books by Jamaican authors and I continue to observe that mothering is almost always a theme or a plot twist by these writers so I have updated my original essay. In short, I considered the themes in about 83 books, non-academic of course, written by Jamaicans which are memoirs, children's storybooks, YA novels and adult novels. Of these, I came up with a list of 41 that were published between 1990 and 2000, and that had that role of mothering as a theme. And looking at it this way, in 83 books, 40 of them, or about half, had mothering as a major theme. These are my views, of course. Of these 41 books, including two of my own, about 31.5% depict mothers having a negative effect on their children. About 31.5% the same have positive mothering. About 20% show mothers as having both positive and negative effects. And in 17% of these books, the mother is missing. And there may be a surrogate acting as a mother. My reading. So just to point out, this is how I am making sure not to infringe too much on copyright by putting a filter over the book covers. Well, perhaps the best known Caribbean, not Jamaican work on about an intense mother and daughter relationship is the 1985 novel Annie John by the Antiguan writer Jamaica Kincaid. The book is follow, followed up by other Kincaid novels where conflict between mother and daughter and acidic criticism of the mother is really a dominant theme. Her novel of 1988, A Small Place, for example, is a commentary on her motherland. 
To be placed on my mothering shelf, the book had to have the impact of mothering on the life of the protagonist I, or protagonists. I wanted to have a contemporary feel, so limited the publishing date to 1990 and after. The book with the most recent publishing date is in 2020. So this review covers books published within those 30 years. I wish to highlight acclaimed novels that were written by three authors who have Jamaican roots, Andrea Levy, Zadie Smith, and Zalika Reed Benta. We start as we must with Andrea Levy's Small Place, which can be described as a story of two women, Hortense and Queenie, who are forging a new society in post-war England. They are experiencing dislocation, racism, contemplating their personal aspirations and their swooning in romantic attractions. But the lives of two families turn on the birth of a child, and importantly, who becomes its mother. The book won the Orange Prize for Fiction, Whitbread Award for Novel and Book of the Year 2004, and the Commonwealth Writers Prize for Best Book Overall 2005, and has been adapted for the stage by the UK National Theatre and also for television. In White Teeth by Zadie Smith, a major character, Irie, is a second-generation British Jamaican. Her mother is notable in that she has no teeth. This is just one way that we know that Irie's mother tries but does not succeed in achieving her dreams in British society. Irie's grandmother, who was born in Jamaica, becomes a very important mentor for Irie, and Irie later wants to become a dentist, probably as a way to continually save her mother and earlier female antecedents who could not fully benefit from opportunities of living in Britain. In 2000, White Teeth won or was highly acclaimed by at least seven major literary award programs, including the Whitbread Award for First Novel in 2000 and the Commonwealth Writers' Prize for Best First Book Overall, and that was in 2001. Canadian teenage character Cara Davis lives between her mother's modern ways that are driven by a desire to achieve her personal academic goals and her grandmother's ways, which are driven by always keeping an immaculate house, keeping a husband in the house, and by serving up wonderful meals. The book Frying Plantain is by Jamaican-Canadian Zalika Reed Benta, and the book won the 23rd annual Danuta Glean Literary Award in 2019. There are five autobiographies or memoirs in my mothering list. I will mention three of them now. Two are autobiographies by cricketers, and these two are overwhelmingly in praise of motherhood. In Whispering Death, Michael Holding gives kudos to his parents, Ralph and Enid Holding, individually and together for his upbringing. He credits his mother for her role in his nurturing of the game of cricket. He emphasizes in his book that the Holding Pavilion at the Melbourne Cricket Club in Kingston is a family pavilion and it is not named in his individual honor. Christopher Gale, whose autobiography Six Machine, I don't like cricket, I love it, gives credit to his parents, Dudley and Hazel Gale, as nurturers and unwavering sources of love. His mother is a hero in his life then and also now, and he absolutely delights in her. Lives of a Soul by Courtney Lodge is an autobiography, but it reads like fantastic figure, fiction. Here, the author traveled through time and landed where he could be redeemed from actions of a past life. And he selected the perfect mother who then gave him up for spiritual reasons to be raised by the perfect stepmother. Abigail's Glorious Hair is by children's book author Diane Brown, and it demonstrates how mothers play a role how their children perceive themselves. Abigail's best times are when her hair is being combed by her mother. The action reinforces love and gives her a feeling of being nurtured. The Magic of Confidence ebook by Janelle Murdoch is about 12-year-old Danielle who is looking forward to receiving what every other girl in her school receives. Magical powers, of course. When it doesn't come, she learns that her parents, in particular her mother, out of love and an abundance of precaution, caused her to be denied these powers. It is the wise grand
grandmother who later steps in and gives Daniel the opportunity that she craves. Of the other magical realism stroke fantasy books on my list, three are YA books. Two of them underscore the high rank of mothers in societies. Susan Francis Brown's The Mermaid Escapade is a children's heroic adventure and the prominent central figure for them is a, is a wise river mumma, a queen mother who helps mer children Lula and Sasura and human children Kwame, Abena and Elena. River Mumma is also a mythical queen in the other middle school YA book, Delroy in the Marog Kingdom by Billy Elm. In, in this book, River Mumma also supports Delroy in an important and dangerous quest. In both books, the nurturing of mothers, fathers, and the community provides a foundation for the development of the character of the children in the books. Still in the realm of fantasy and magical realism is a novel sketcher, which was written by the newly minted 2021 Regional Commonwealth Short Story Prize winner, Roland Watson Grant. The novel sketcher started out as a short story and won the 2011 Lightship International Prize. In the book, the no-nonsense mother Valerie Beaumont is imbued with magical powers and her son Skid believes that what she bequeaths to her children can mend aspects of their past and that the children can also use this to create the future that they are imagining for themselves. The reflection on childhood in the novel, in the YA, novel all over again by Aziko Simba Gegele is nostalgic and of a beautiful past epoch. That book won the 2014 Burt Award for Literature Prize. This theme of loving, united parenting of young children is a major theme in the book and also in the book No Boy Like Amanda by Hope Barnett, which is of course about a girl with a family of brothers but she will not be left behind. In both books, the two-parent single family household securely exists in a safe, supportive community, which reinforces the idea that values are shared across generations. Michelle Thompson's A Way to Escape is a triumph of the hardworking mother over a failed marriage and a struggling financial situation. Rose is a quintessential mother who overcomes hardship through grit and prayer. She keeps her children together and then she successfully escapes from Jamaica to Canada. Nicola Yoon's debut novel, The Sun is Also a Star, is about Natasha and Daniel who fall in love the day that Natasha and her family are to be deported from the USA to Jamaica. It was accorded the New York Times Notable Book of 2016 and has been made into a feature film. We learn that Natasha's mother's greatest aspiration is that her children do well in the USA, and this is also Natasha's dream for herself. Her father is content to be happy in his life and wishes he could be living back in Jamaica. Daniel's parents are Americans from Korea, and Daniel's mother also has high expectations for her sons, and she doesn't want them to depart from their Korean traditions. Escape is also the subtext of Pamela K. Marshall's Barrel Children series. In the second novel in the series, Breaking the Cycle, Will and Sarah, who grew up in Jamaica as barrel children and were raised by conscientious relatives who became their surrogate parents because their own parents had migrated in ch chase of financial success. As adolescents, they became romantically involved, they migrated and married each other. Their relationship was continually under the strain because of feelings of parental abandonment and shame that they were not good enough to be wanted by their mothers. What keeps them together is that they do not want to abandon their children and they are determined to give them a secure family life. Marshall has said that it is her experience in social work with Jamaicans living in the USA that led her to write a story that would not just show what emotional trauma barrel children live through, but that the book would offer a map for others on how to nurture healthy family life in the USA. 
The Dixons by Claudette Beckford Brady introduces a proverbial evil in an otherwise safe and beautiful garden. The Dixon family live in a rural town in Jamaica with a wise and loving mother, Merle, and a hardworking and loving father, David, and they are the rescuers of a girl who is floundering because of negligent parents, particularly a negligent mother. I have observed the role of mothers in three novels of the late Garfield Ellis, from memory as I really have not read them, reread them recently, for nothing at all and wake Rasta tell of neglect by mothers who took their eyes off their children, allowing them to be carried away into the unsavory sides of life's experiences. This parental neglect extends into the community as there are weak supports to promote integrity but strong systems for honor among thieves. The third book by Ellis, Such As I Have, which won the 2000 Unamarsen Award for Adult Literature, seems to have been a foreshadowing of his own life experiences. This book is centered around the handsome and virile Headley and his infatuation with Pam, a young woman who has a lot on her mind. The mother of Pam is a third Warner woman, and this is crucial for the story of devotion and acceptance that Ellis wanted to tell. The hapless fate of the motherless child who is hurt by life is well explored in the four books, Mr. King's Daughter, Turn Back Blue, The Last Warner Woman, and August Town. The late Hazel Campbell was one of Jamaica's leading short story writers and children writers from the 1970s through to for about 50 years. The short e-book, Mr. King's Daughter, features Simone, who is locked in luxury with her pet cat, Biddy, and servant, G. This is her doting father's way to control who he would eventually choose as a son-in-law. Simone makes decisions that cause her to enter into worries which are resolved with the love of a good man. The unwritten message is that although her father did his best, the young woman would have avoided these worries if she had a sensible female parent in her life. The hilarious Turn Back Blow by Roger Williams features orphan Clifton, whose friends are wild and domestic animals, and who is suffering because he lives with an abusive uncle who is also involved in crime. The protection and nurturing of the boy is provided by his animal friends, and also another child. Kai Miller's The Last Warner Woman is a story of Adamine Bustamante, whose mother died, leaving her to be raised by an elderly woman who works in a leper colony. In other words, in an extremely marginalized society. It is hardly surprising then that the naive Bustamante is vulnerable to the vagaries of Jamaican society and then the wider world. August Town, which is also by Kai Miller, won the 2017 OCM Bocas Prize for Caribbean Literature and was nominated for the Jamaican Lignum Vitae Award and several other international awards. In it, preteen Kaya and teen Gina have no living mother in their home in the struggling community of August Town. They are being mothered by a well meaning spiritualist elderly relative whose outlook is somewhat different from what they experience in their lives. There is, though, a mythical community mother who empathizes with them and who weeps for them. The other teen in the book is Michael, who lives in a wealthy community, and he also benefits from living in a home with a loving mother and father and all creature comforts. The difference could not be starker. Nalo Hopkinson is the author of the other two high fantasy stroke science fiction books. Brown Girl in the Ring received recognition by being nominated for several awards, including the Fantasy Fiction Award for Canada, the Pre Aurora Award. In 2020, 22 years after it was published, Time magazine placed it on the list the 100 top fantasy novels of all time. The protagonist is young mother Tijon, who is at a turning point in her life where she has to decide whether she's going to stay with her child's father or she's going to follow in the footsteps of her wise spiritual grandmother who raised her. Based on the situation, she cannot have both. While she's trying to figure this out, the machinations of her absent parents force her hands and she comes face to face with her pitiful mother and her powerful father. Hopkinson's book 
sister mine is also family bound with the sisters Abby and Makeda who are twins with significant differences. Now the weaker twin must become stronger in order to save the parent who sacrificed everything for their family and that parent is not their mother. Their mother became a sea creature after they were born and did not raise them. In 2014, Sister Mine won the Andre Norton Award for Outstanding Young Adult Science Fiction or Fantasy. Rachel Manley's first memoir, Drum Blair, Memories of a Jamaican Family, opened up the private lives of what was the country's premier political family from the 1930s right through to about the 1970s. The book won the Canada Governor General's Award for Nonfiction in 1997 and was the first of three memoirs about Manley's motherless childhood in Jamaica. And in them, and in it, she burnishes the reputations of the grandparents who raised her in, in her recollections depicted in the books. To recap, I have recounted 13 books where the mother is a force for good. Whispering Death, Six Machine, Abigail's Glorious Hair, Such As I Have, Mermaid Escapade, All Over Again, No Boy Like Amanda, A Way to Escape, Delroy in the Marog Kingdom, Sketcher, Small Island, The Sun is Also a Star, and The Magic of Confidence. Seven books have examples of good counterbalance with bad or inept mothering. White Teeth, Lives of a Soul, For Nothing at All, Wake Rasta, The Dixons, Breaking the Cycle, and Frying Plantain. Missing mothers whose children are being nurtured by others are in seven books. Mr. King's Daughter, Turn Back Blue, Last Warner Woman, August Town, Brown Girl in the Ring, Sister Mine, and Drum Blair. We've gone through 27 books and now turn to books where the mother is a theme in the book, but not as a force for good. We've come to the disgraceful mothers. The children's book by Diane Brown, The Happiness Dress, can be read as a criticism of members of the diaspora who disparage Jamaican traditions as outdated. Little British born Carolyn has received a dress as a gift. It was sewn in Jamaica from many different kinds of colorful fabrics. Carolyn loves her dress, but her mother and grandmother who live with her in Britain reject it as being unsophisticated. When Carolyn gets permission finally to wear the dress, she receives endless compliments from the British people around her who admire her happiness dress. The book seems to be a direct caution by Brown to persons who love Jamaica but who discount and belittle its traditions that have produced world-leading personalities. Shameful Shadows by Dita Sylvester is set in idyllic rural Jamaica where family relationships are convoluted because of the tempestuous romantic life of Daisy. Family life decisions that are later taken by her children, Earl and Vanelle, are as a direct result of their observations of their mother. Earl becomes ultra-conservative and fearful of marriage, while Vanelle yearns for closeness and takes directly opposing decisions. The author deliberately shows us what happens when, as the Jamaican proverb warns, warns you lay yourself careless. Carol Dunn's family saga, The Mountain of Inheritance, which won a rare 2006 JCDC Gold Medal Award, actually has several mother themes. It starts with a girl who is placed into sexual slavery by her mother, and that is only the start. Through the book, there are other examples of sexual decisions that women made that did not help the lives of the children that they had control over. The book does demonstrate how the impact of harmful family histories can be repaired by self-determination. The 2015 second place Burt Prize for Caribbean Literature went to Diana Macaulay's Gone to Drift. That book was also awarded the Vickery Prize for Young Adult Literature. Just for completeness, the first place that year for the Burt Prize was a Ghanese writer Imam Bakish's book, book, sorry, novel, Children of the Spider. In Macaulay's book, Preteen Lloyd is desperately searching for his grandfather who has gone missing. Grandfather Conrad is a humble and honest fisherman and the boy's mentor and his close companion. Lloyd's mother is a consort of a criminal and she does not care for her son. In her 2016 review of this book, and I'm not directly quoting from her popular blog, Picheri's blog, Emma Lewis notes that Lloyd's mother provides food and shelter 
but always seems to have her back turned to him. The book tells us that Grandfather Conrad grew up in a happy, loving, and aside from the dangers of living from the sea, a secure and very poor family. Colleen Dennis Smith details traits of uncaring mothers in her books, and I mentioned two, Generation Curse and For Her Son. My colleagues who read Generation Curse really disliked it. But I love the book's metaphors, imagery, characters, and plot development, but can have sympathy for readers for being disgusted by the storyline of Mrs. Harmond, a poor, pious, elderly rural grandmother who does not complain about raising the ten grandchildren that her children have left on her to raise without any support. Although she lives an upright lifestyle and is kind to her grandchildren, one after another they come to grief and their parents do not care. The one daughter who does help Mrs. Harmond has herself a stable family environment and steady employment. For her son, also by Smith Dennis, is about a mother living in affluence, but she displays terrible mothering. In this book, Bernard Jr. is being ruined because of his overly indulgent mother, while her older son, Jared, fathered by the man who broke her heart when she was a young woman, is totally despised by her. Two generations of women are considered in Nicole Dennis Ben's novel, Here Comes the Sun, which won the 2016 Lambda Award for Lesbian Fiction. Dolores trains her elder daughter, Margot, to be a sacrifice so that the younger daughter, Tandy, can have a better life and be the star of the family. Margot accepts her role and she takes on prostitution as a side hustle to her job as a hotel concierge. Dolores, who is a craft market vendor, provides no moral example or emotional support for either daughter. The entire book, I can also add, is a condemnation of the tourism industry as experienced in the Caribbean. Melanie Schwab's Dew Angels won the Literary Classics 2014 Words on Wings Young Adult Prize. It features a sensitive and ambitious Nola who is mistreated by her parents because of her skin color. The society has biases and customs, but Nola's mother never protected her daughter from prejudice even within the bosom of the family. Color again plays a role in dancing lessons by our current poet laureate, Olive Senior. This is Senior's only novel and it was shortlisted for the 2012 Commonwealth Book Prize. In it, Gertrude, an elderly woman, comes to her moment of reckoning where her own fate is now in the hands of one of her daughters. Gertrude is living in an upscale nursing home and is reflecting on her life growing up without a mother. She ascribes everything bad that has happened to her to be the result of being a dark-skinned child raised by a family of light-skinned relatives, even though those relatives cared and supported her advancement. Gertrude had a broken marriage and their children ended up loving their father more than they did her. So Gertrude frames herself as being a survivor of an unfair life and someone who had to suffer at the hands of ungrateful children, a bad husband and a dysfunctional family. The book has a lot more. This is just one aspect of it that I have picked up for the purposes of this essay. Vibration from Palam Palam by Doral Wilcott is a story of Dalfus, who grows up in a haunted woodland where there is no love among the three members of a family, mother, father, and son. The marriage came about because it provided financial security for the mother and a higher social status for the father. The book says of the mother that she, open quotations, had seen everything that she disliked about her husband in that little boy, closed quotations. There was no warming of the mother stroke son relationship over time, but he found reasons to have affection for his father. As a middle-aged man, Dalfus seems to have transferred hatred of his mother to his mother-in-law. The most excruciating examination of the mother stroke child relationship is a 2016 memoir of Lady Colin Campbell and the title explains exactly what the content of this book is about. The title is Daughter of Narcissus, a family's struggle to survive their mother's narcissistic personality disorder. 
Through her own self-help as an adult, Campbell has learned about the field of psychology and uses this to explain what happened to her mother, Gloria. Campbell exposes that Gloria's lack of discipline and correction in childhood caused embedded sides of her personality to fester into narcissism and later alcoholism. On reading it, visions of the character Scarlett O'Hara from the novel Gone with the Wind came to my mind as Scarlett may have become a Gloria if she did not have the firm and kind guidance of Mammy. Gloria's decision for financial and social status reasons to live with a Lothario husband who physically abused his children and employees only worsened her mental state. You can imagine the very negative long-term impact that this had on her close associations. The role of the grandmother becomes increasingly important to the children's well-being as they get older and their mother succumbs to her own destructive neuroses. The book also shows how Campbell and her siblings took personal responsibility to shape successful lives outside of their family negative family experiences. Melanie Schwab's Lest We Find Gold is a story of Millie's decision to endure physical and mental abuse in order to maintain affluence, and that this was a direct result of Millie seeing her mother accept mistress status as a means to financial security. Millie's mother deliberately excluded her father from her upbringing. The book was reviewed in 2019 on Kelly Catherine McIntosh's blog, Here's What I Think, and McIntosh said, open quotations, Millie's relationship with her mother is central to her own feelings of worth, and yes, it informs the choices she makes. Closed quotations. The book allows Millie to be aware of why she made the choices that she did, and it also gave her a route to move away from them when she was mentally and emotionally ready to make those changes. Did I say final two books? You know I have to add two of my own books, Bad Girls in School and Young Heroes of the Caribbean. In both, I believe that I wanted to show that very close communication with children is an important part of caring for them. In Bad Girls, published in 2007 and which was shortlisted for the 2008 Vickery Prize of the National Book Development Council, Taj is a barrel child whose mother is missing and whose grandmother is a bit too busy for her. Katrina's mother is focused on her career as a woman police and Caledonia's parents are oblivious of her needs and the risks to which they have unwittingly exposed her. None of the girls were saved by either of their parents. The school system became the parent. Young Heroes of the Caribbean, published in 2015, finds a boy being aware that he is living with a loving but ignorant mother and an ambitious father. Father takes over his upbringing and his mother has to start a journey to develop herself into a stronger individual who has personal aspirations and who can be a capable parent for her child. Along the way, she fosters a girl and improves her approach to parenting. Both my books describe mothers who are not supportive of their children emotionally and in other ways as well. I wish to slip in a commentary on plays if you would allow me. I can identify the role of mother in two recent stage plays and, audio dra and an audio drama. Actress Rosie Murray starred as Audrey, a domineering mother, in the 2017 production Take Your Hand Off For Me by Michael Dawson. Audrey was a domineering mother who inveigled her daughter to stay in a violent, clandestine romantic relationship as a way to secure financial security. Murray's performance secured her an Actor Boy nomination for Best Actress in a Lead Role. She won the award for another role, though, that year as a disabled woman, Patience, in the David Tuller tragedy, Not My Child. Unfortunately, I did not see that play, but I have read that mothers and daughters are at the center of the tale. The play Pressure Drop by Basil Dawkins, staged in 2018, is about the turning point in the life of a family, and two mothers influence the plot. One mother is dead and the other is alive. The living mother, Dotsy, is living with dementia, but her racist and dishonest nature remain dominant features of her character. As a businesswoman, Dotsy's dealings has driven many families into poverty. She also dominated her daughter, Deslin, who sought relief in alcohol. 
and Dotsie also continually drives a wedge between Deslin and her husband, Luke. The legacy of the dearly departed mother is a sense of stability in the family, comfort, counsel, and immortal love in the lives of her widow and her son, who is Luke, the husband of Deslin. And the both husband and son do try to live up to the values of their now deceased wife and mother. Ruth Hoshing won the 2018 Actor Boy Award for Best Actress in a Supporting Role for playing the demented and unrepentant Dotsie. 2002 Commonwealth short story winner Michael Record had one of his short stories read during the 2021 Brian Heap Creative Writing Podcast at the Philip Sherlock Center for the Creative Arts, Yui Mona Creative Writing Competition 2020-2021. The squatter is about Rory and he's a young man who is in a life-threatening dilemma because his community has basically rejected, his mother is not trying to protect him and in effect has also sort of ostracized him. Why? Because he has chosen to openly live as a homosexual. In the meantime, Stropper, who is his brother, is in even a worse situation. Of the 41 books that have been considered, 71% of them were written by women, I noted. And to recap, about 31.5 of the 41 books depict mothers having a negative effect on their children. About 31.5 have positive mothering. About 20% show mothers as having both positive and negative effects. And in 17% of these books, the mother is missing and there may be a surrogate acting as a mother. In many of the novels, there was not a sad ending or a dystopian future. Our writers allow their characters to find a way through difficult situations. It could be said that they were optimistic about the prospects of their characters. Even old Mrs. Harmon, with the ten grandchildren going the wrong way, had a happy ending. And Mr. King's daughter worked her way through her reckless decisions. And Myra Miro in Young Heroes of the Caribbean, Conrad in Gone to Drift, and Clifton, in turn back blue, foiled the machinations of vicious criminals. Many of the books that I have written about here have been critically acclaimed, so I think it's a good assumption that the writers are doing the job of introspection and are delivering stories with vitality and in context. What visions of our society are they allowing us to contemplate by using the role of the mother? There is more in the full essay, which is on my website, where I reveal what the writers say about the topic of fathering. Can't miss that. And I also give a gender comparison between outlooks of what the male authors were writing versus what the female authors were writing about the theme that has been featured here. There's also a link on my Goodreads page of titles of books by Jamaican authors that you can probably borrow from a library or you can buy and enjoy. This essay is my reading of these books, and of course it is open to interpretation. It was not my goal to cover every nuance, and even as I edited this essay, I did find reasons sometimes to change my view. If I made you think about reading a book by a Jamaican author, my heart will indeed be glad. It is a great compliment to have had your attention on this topic. Thank you so much. <laughs>